Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. So today we are going to discuss about microservices. This is going to be exciting lecture and we are going to discuss six topics starting from what are, what is monolithic application, what are microservices, what is API gateway, how to scale a microservice, what is service discovery and how do we use databases for each microservice. So let's get into our first topic which is what is monolithic application. So consider an example of uh, e-commerce website for example Amazon. So in Amazon there are various features. For example Amazon uh, manages user information, Amazon uh, manages the buying and selling of product and Amazon manages payments. So uh, there are various features user profile, buyer and payment. So all these things are deployed as one application. So if you deploy all the features as one deployment then that is known as monolithic application. So consider an example if you want to change anything in payments then if you make change in payment you did not make change in buyer functionality you did not change make in you did not uh, make change in user profile still you have to deploy the entire application you have to build the entire application and deploy the entire application so this is one of the disadvantages of monolithic application uh, that is one of the major reason why microservices were introduced so let's see what is microservice uh, let's get into our second topic which is microservices so in microservices we have a small application and those small applications serve a specific purpose for example we create three microservices out of this one big monolithic application so this three microservices will be user profile microservice user profile microservice the second microservice will be your buyer related microservice which will manage all the buying related stuff and the third microservice is going to be your payment related microservice. Now what we did, we decomposed the monolithic application into three microservices. Now uh, you can see if there is any change to the functionality of payment, then you can independently build and deploy only the payment related functionality. You don't have to touch user profile or buy related microservices. Similarly, if you encounter any bug in payment microservice, then you can do the changes, build and deploy the payment microservice independently. Now let's look at the uh, third concept, which is our API gateway. So API gateway. Uh, we'll look at why we need API gateway and uh, what is the necessity that we have to introduce API gateway. To understand API gateway, we need to understand how client makes requests to uh, the application. So consider before microservices when there was monolith application client used to make a request to the deployed application. So this is my big monolithic application and it used to run on one URL. So client in the sense your Chrome browser. So Chrome used to make a rest request to your big monolithic application and there was only single URL for that monolithic application. But in microservices, as you can see, there are three microservices, user, payment and buyer, and each of them run on a separate URL. So for this, we have, uh, for example, URL A, for this URL B, and for this URL C. Now, if client wants to make a request to each of the microservice, then client needs the URL of A, URL of B, and URL of C. And hence, this becomes a cumbersome approach because client has to maintain all the URL with itself. And in case the URL changes, then we have to notify client. We have to make changes to the client. And that is cumbersome and hard to maintain approach. That is the reason we came up with the concept of API Gateway. In API Gateway, what will happen? Consider this is your first uh, microservice which is user profile then we have next microservice buyer and then we have payment microservice now there will be additional layer in front of them and we call this layer as api gateway so this is my api gateway and this runs on one url and only url of this api gateway is shared with the client so now client has only one url the client always calls API gateway and API gateway internally calls either the user profile or the buyer or the payment.
payment. So based on the uh, slug, uh, API Gateway knows which microservice to call. So that is the main reason why API Gateway was introduced. So there are some additional uh, features which API Gateway can cater, uh, which we are going to look at in the upcoming tutorial. So let's move on to our fourth concept, which is uh, scaling. So we saw with monolithic uh, application, you have to deploy the entire application as one entity. But consider this scenario. We are getting a lot of requests for only payments, but we are not getting a lot of requests for user profile. Then how do I scale only the payment portion of, uh, uh, of the monolithic application? So that was not possible in case of uh, monolithic application. So that is one of the advantage in microservice. In microservice, what you could do is, you can deploy one instance of uh, user profile, you can deploy one instance of uh, buyer, but you can deploy multiple instances of payment. So only payment services can be uh, scaled independently. So as you can see, we got several requests for payment. That is the reason we deployed two instances of payment microservice and only one instance of uh, user profile and buyer microservice. Now there is a uh, API gateway as usual and when the request comes, it will go to one of the microservices. So one of the advantages of microservices, you can independently scale components of your uh, microservice uh, application. So that is about uh, scaling. Now let's move to our uh, fifth concept, which is service discovery. So service discovery is very important concept uh, and it often gets asked uh, in the interview. So service discovery is to understand service discovery. First, we need to understand that any microservice, for example, there is user profile microservice. It's run. It runs on one URL. Buyer runs on one URL, and payment runs on one URL. What if, what if uh, there is a request when you buy a product? So a call will go to buyer microservice, and to buy a product, you need to make a payment. So buyer microservice has to call payments microservice. So this, uh, how do buyer microservice know the URL of payment microservice. So the one way is that buyer microservice will hard code the URL of payment microservice. So we can say it is hard coding, but hard coding, as you know, is never a best approach. So how do we ensure that without hard coding, I get information related to payment microservice. So here comes the concept of service discovery. So there is one module known as service discovery and whenever any microservice is um, up and running microservice itself register register itself with the service discovery server so consider there is one payment microservice whenever this is up and running it will register itself with the service discovery module and whenever buyer module wants to call the payment microservice so consider there is a buyer microservice which wants to call the payment microservice. The buyer will consult uh, the service discovery module and service discovery knows the URL of payment microservice. So service discovery will return uh, the URL of payment microservice and then buyer will call that payment microservice using that URL. So there are various approaches to service discovery. Uh, there is client side approach, there is server side approach, which we are going to discuss in the upcoming tutorial. So let's discuss our uh, last topic, which is, uh, let me separate this out. Let's discuss our last topic, which is database per microservice. So what used to happen uh, in the monolithic application is we have one big application with uh, feature one, with feature two and feature three, and it has only one database. So this, this was the case with monolithic application, one uh, big application and all the features share only one database. Now with microservices, uh, this is user profile uh, microservice, which has a separate DB. And uh, then then comes a buyer uh, microservice with a separate database. And then comes uh, my final service, uh, which is my payment service. And payment service will have a separate DB. As you can see, 
there is separate DB for each microservice and uh, they don't share uh, the database uh, with each other. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep liking, keep subscribing. Thanks a lot.